Little green fish, first up. Good deal. See ya. Thanks for playing. Over here at the spray bench, I'm going to start out by answering a question you guys have been asking me, and a lot, a lot of questions lately. And I was thinking back, I have several videos that show time lapse, and I was fairly certain that I had a couple of videos where I show the actual process of me clear coating a jointed bait. I looked for a few of them, and then I realized that it's hard to make you guys sift through the playlist when I'm having some difficulty finding it myself. So, I've got three of these in front of me and they are part of a group of 50 um, that I'm doing at the moment, which is pretty cool. Um, another story for another time. But I'm going to do a proper how I clear coat a jointed swim bait. These are the little guys, but it really does not matter. All you need is a proper flat brush. Okay, and this is a flat artist brush. And you want to take it and kind of give it a little flick because you want to make sure there's no dust or particles and you want to pull on the bristles and make sure they don't come out. And if you do get debris or anything on this brush while you're clear coating, make sure you have some scrap paper down just so that you can brush that through and brush it off so it doesn't get stuck on your bait. So I've got a couple of these little green sunfish that I want to do this morning and then we're going to get into this bait right here which was a random let's pick a winner and send you a free bait deal. And I do that from time to time. I'll definitely be doing something when I hit 10,000 and I'm going to do it again when I hit 100,000. And I'm saying that because thinking positive and working positive and continually persisting and moving forward and working towards a goal is the only way that I know how to accomplish success. You can't give up. You can't quit. You can't wait until somebody throws stuff at you. It doesn't happen that way. You have to work. You have to work hard for stuff. Um, occasionally, you'll have some random lightning striking and crazy stuff happens and you get successful and you make a lot of money. But 99 times out of 100, that's not the case. You have to work hard for what you have in life. And you have to pay homage when it's due. And I could go through a list of people that have been my mentors as I've come up through the bait process and this, the fishing industry and custom painting. I didn't, I sucked when I started. I'll straight up tell you, I think everybody that starts that's never picked up an airbrush before, they suck. Um, maybe not. I mean, I always had the art background, but I think that I sucked. As a matter of fact, I know I've done this on Facebook a couple times, but I keep... I keep these guys right here to remind myself of the journey that's been traveled. And one's on the floor. I'll get that later. But just as an example, this is done, folks, with Sharpie and some glitter. I put the eyes on the back, which was clever thinking. I didn't know what the heck I was doing, folks. I really didn't. So I just started goofing around with stuff. And I kept goofing around with stuff and I kept watching people and I kept asking the right questions and not being braggadocia and not stepping on people's toes. And if I screwed up, if I did something that people were like, whoa, <laughs> then you own it. And that's how you join a community. And then, you know, obviously snowballed. I've been a YouTuber since 2012, but... I wasn't really into YouTubing until probably 2014 when I started doing, I was heavy into tournament fishing for a couple of years and just really got consumed by my passion for wanting to paint a better, not out of the box, not cookie cutter with a couple of dabs of paint and some cheap, I just wanted to do stuff better. 
And then I got excited about doing stuff better and I wanted to teach you guys how to do stuff better. And that's how you come up through the process. You don't, I don't start out with the studio. That doesn't happen like that. You start out with maybe a table and a tabletop. I had that, that tabletop air compressor. It was a master air compressor and it sat right here for a couple of years until I spilled tea on it and it died. I am very happy with the setup I have now, but I'm outgrowing it. But that's just, I keep pushing myself to do stuff that I haven't done before. And I keep pushing myself to promote that within the community. I always have a saying that you're not my competition, you're my community. And I live by that because I'm, it makes sense to me. And I believe in that. Um, we all kind of do things better together. And it's been my mission to help you guys. So long story short, this is why I do what I do on this channel. Because not everybody's going to want to do this for a living. Somebody is probably going to be out there that will want to do it for a living like me. Or like Chris Grout. Or like uh, Mike Buca out there. Or the, the people that have come up through the business and are doing it professionally. But most of you, a lot of you, are just hobbyists. You're part-time. And you love doing it just for the joy of having something to do that's really cool. And you, you, there's no better feeling than catching a fish on a pattern that you have created. Long story even longer, I want to show you guys step by step on how we go about clear coating. I'm going to do three of them. So I always keep these. This is, um, we're going to hang this on the nose. And it doesn't matter which side. I use them until I can't use them anymore, and I'll pull the excess epoxy off of them. Actually, technically clear coat since it's KBS, but the same would apply. And I fasten them to the nose before I ever crack open this jar. And I do that because the less time you spend exposing the chemicals in this clear coat to oxygen, the better off you'll be. So don't leave the can open or the jar. Um, don't leave it open. Keep it closed until you're ready to use it. And when you're finished using it, close it back up. Seal it tight. Put that plastic between there if you're, if you're a KB user such as myself. Put that plastic on there and make sure that lid's down tight. And then don't keep taking it off. So those are the things that I have learned and those are the things that I like to pass on to you. We're going to start tail down. Now this is obviously that Buca Baby Bullshed that Ketchco has collaborated with Mike Buca on. It has the synthetic hair as the tail, which um, holds up pretty good. I've, I've thrown the mess out of this particular pattern over the past couple of weeks and the tail holds up pretty good. In, in the water, when it's wet a little bit, it has a tendency every once in a while a little curl, but it comes right back. So pretty, pretty stoked about how this thing moves. That's a whole other video. We'll show you guys that. I'm going to open this. And I, I, don't, um, I don't saturate the brush. I just get it to where I've got enough epoxy loaded on it. And we'll do two coats, but you're going to see one coat because same verse, second is the same as there's a saying. It's, it sounded better in my head. But anyways, second verse, same as first. There it is. I knew it. Um, start with the tail down. Do the last segment so that you can still hold this bait. There's Molly. We'll turn around while there's Rascal. And there's Molly. You know your name, don't you? Good girl. They hang their shop dogs. They love it. And just go all the way around. And if you're gonna, if you have a, a, a tail that you can't paint or epoxy, then be very gentle on the edges. Just run the edge of that paintbrush right up to it. And then you're good. And you can go back to the next segment. And do the same thing. Give it even coats. 
make sure you're using this epoxy or clear coat, whatever it is that you guys prefer to use. Um, use it in good lighting because you really want to make sure that you're covering everything. You don't leave any anything blank or dry without clear coat on it. You want just a good cover and then kind of move your hand back as you're going through it. Now, KBS is self-leveling and what I mean by that is that if I put this on sometimes if you're using epoxy and you use it with a brush you'll see those those bristles they'll, they'll make those little uh, lines indentations and it doesn't really come out I've also noticed that in canvas when you seal a, a canvas that you've painted acrylic or oil uh, but this stuff is self-leveling which means that the lines in your paintbrush go away any lines that you've left in your clear coat I'm just making sure that I get all the nooks and crannies. I'm paying particular attention not to move my paintbrush into these joints or around these edges. This thing will move back and forth anyways, so it's gonna, it's gonna, I would say, hamper the way that it swims. But it's definitely okay not to coat anything in there. And then I've got my thumb and forefinger on here And I'll do most of it with my hand still on the head of this bait, on the head section. I'll flip it. And again, just kind of eyeball it and make sure that you are covering everything that you need to cover and none of the parts that you don't. And as you brush across the eye, and if there's a gill plate and fins, which normally on swim baits there are, once you've coated it, come back without any excess clear coat and scoop, take the edge of your brush just like this, take the edge of your brush around the eye just once and what that's doing is two things. It's getting any excess epoxy or clear coat out of the eye socket and it's also keeping the bubbles from forming because a lot of times especially if you use super glue um, chemicals have a way of reacting together I'm just kind of moving around looking to see that I don't have any issues that everything is covered evenly you can hold you can grasp this tail or if you have a tail attached and there you go now there are different nuances to different swim baits some you got to leave the tails off while you clear coat some you want to keep them on some baits you need to pull a pin up so that you can access the tuning chamber and the tuning uh, peg or pen while you're doing it but that is the basics right there and then I'm gonna go through one with you guys and then as soon as you're done you don't need a, a tail drip wire because you've gone on evenly and this will as it self levels it's not going to drip and you're making sure that you're not putting too much you don't want to like again you don't want to load too much on there so same thing on the next one just go through run it evenly I'm going to go a little faster this time I'm going to show you both of these And by the time you guys start doing this, you'll be pros at it. Now you'll notice that I, I'm not holding this as tightly as I was before because you will get a little bit of residue of clear coat on your gloves. Wear gloves because this stuff will tear your skin up after a while. And if I weren't talking to you, I would have my respirator on. So make sure you guys are wearing your respirator. And I know it's been a crazy, crazy year, but the, uh, the respirator stuff is back in stock. Um, I, I know I've purchased at Amazon in the last month or so, a couple of months. 
just remember that go right to the edge of that tail let that self level and then we're going to just come around the bait but yeah you'll get you'll get some residue on there so you want to make sure that you're not holding it too close because you don't want to accidentally rip any of your work off of this you want to let that settle in and that's pretty much it folks that is how I do a jointed bait don't dip jointed baits just don't do it never a good idea and it's going to end up costing you a lot because what will happen is stuff will get in the joints and it won't swim right and if you're making these for customers they're not going to be happy with you so I'm just kind of working my way around and again it's just a little bit of practice practice makes perfect we're close to it none of us are perfect you can strive for it that's it folks that is how I clear a jointed bait in this case it's a baby bull shad custom spray in green sunfish somebody called it a long year the other day that's cool they are similar but this is a green I promise least my interpretation and that's just like art it is subject to interpretation there we go bait number two and we hang it and forget about it come back the next day and you're good to go America. <laughs>